One of the most important elements of ColorPro plugins is its new color management system that is based around the two plugins called iNode and Onode and a brand new color grading space called JPLog2 designed by Josh Pines. Let's look how to use them and how they work. With I and O nodes, what we really try to create is, is probably the simplest and most powerful color management system out there. Okay, so I want to show you a little bit what we did differently with it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and select your camera and you see you have only one drop down. And that means that, you know, you only select your camera and the output is always going to be JPLog2. So basically this is just an inode and input that is going to convert your camera to JPLog2, which is the largest logarithmic encoding available on the market today. That means it's the only logarithmic encoding that goes further than Arilog C4, yet maintains your mid-gray to be at 400. And it also gives every stop of exposure exactly 50 code values so that your offset setting are, you know, operating exactly like exposure because they affect every stop in the same way. You don't have to linearize the signal as well. So there's lots of like a really interesting, you know, things around it. I'm going to go and make a separate video just about the JPLog2. Okay. But where it really gets interesting is on the output side. Okay, the O node. So what we got here is we got here option to select between SDR outputs, HDR outputs, or scene refer outputs. And that pretty much covers all of the options that you need. Okay, but let me now focus in this video on SDR outputs just to show you the power of it. Okay, so for example, here, what I got is just a standard color space transform by DaVinci Resolve, right? And what I'm using in Resolve Color Management uh, from Blackmagic to 709, using DaVinci's tonal mapping and all of this. And you can tell there's lots of settings. Oh, TF, use white point adaptation. Should I use DaVinci? Should I use custom? There is lots of options here. And think about this. We remove all of that for you because we'll take care of it. So you all select this black magic camera and everything else is being taken care of. You just have to tell us what output you're doing. And what it is, is look, we can perfectly match that these two absolutely match with one another. So there is basically, you know, you, I can emulate by selecting in O node that I'm working in RCM2, I can perfectly well emulate the Resolve color management as well, if I want to work like that, okay? Here is, for example, another way that we color manage today, which is using ACES. I'm going to use ACES 1.3. I'm going to go from black magic to CCT. And then it says, hey, there is also gamut compression. Should I use the gamut compression? Should I use reference? Should I use this? There is, again, like, you know, lots of different options that you sometimes wonder, which one should I use? And then when I'm going back from CCT to 709 on the ODT side, right? What should I do? Like there is lots of options. And then again, like, you know, you get this one 709 option and it's, you know, very specific, you know, it's very harsh, it's very strong, right? But, you know, interestingly, if you're using the, you know, our system, you can just go and say, well, actually give me ACES, ACES 1 output, and then you have a perfect match between yours and ACES 1. Now, the reason why the lips look a little bit different is because here we decided that we're going to actually still apply a little bit reference gamut compression. So you see now they look absolutely identical. So you know the JPLog2 is perfectly... Um, compatible with ACES. But then we take this further. We say, how about we use ACES too? Well, it's out. I mean, it's been out only a few weeks, but you can already use it today. And look at the difference that you get. Look at the quality of this Rec 709 when you're using ACES too as an output. Now, we also have this JP Locon, which is Josh Pine's low contrast famous slot that so many cinematographers love because now I can actually go and build my own look. I have the freedom to really design these 
gorgeous absolutely outputs you must have seen that this is like this kind of softness you know of the shadow is just absolutely something that cinematographers have been adoring why they were loving this low contrast out so now you have it as a part of your color management this is your aces one right and this is the josh pines low contrast okay then i'm gonna go and show you another one which is josh pines is 75 25. this is like a very cinematic profile you know out of the box it feels a little bit like if you are kind of you know like a, doing a little print emulation so many cinematographers again love this one you know it's a quickest way to be like you know like giving you know that kind of little bit cinematic contrast feel but you know you can say no i want to work standard arilog c this is the you know arilog c3 or i can go even arilog c4 right you can utilize all of that then you have the unlimited one the c1 where the color is not um, you know matched you can even have the standard SAMP T-Rex 709 and so on. So you can actually go even and say, no, give me the 709 by Apple, right? So you have so many different options, right? We go a little bit to P3 color spaces and so on and so on and so on. So you see the creativity that you get out of being able to inside your standard color management control different options for odt are as powerful as using different show lights and there is absolutely nothing absolutely nothing stopping you to utilize this in order to be able to create the most beautiful looks okay with the benefit that you're going to be working in the color space that has a more than 12 stops of dynamic range above mid gray where your mid gray is still at the 400 like arilog c so your controls will be behaving in exactly the same way mm -hmm. when you start working with your live gum again everything will behave the way you used to and everything is also being taken care of it's so simple it's just one drop down one option and you're good to go there will be lots more tutorials about different things that we can do with this particular you know way of color managing the io nodes so stay tuned for more info thank you very much for watching this tutorial don't forget to subscribe as we will be publishing more of tutorials like this and if you have any specific questions or you'd like to see something you haven't seen before just please put it down in comments below